Zach Sobiak's soul is filled with lyrics racing against time. Zach, el cáncer lo venció. Y para que lo recordaran, dejó una canción. Zach Sobiak with clouds. Very incredible story. Zach Sobiak was diagnosed with a deadly form of bone cancer. After a four-year battle marked by courage and grace, Zach Sobiak died on May 20th. The song Clouds reached number one on iTunes. The song has raised more than $500,000. We will all remember Zach as the young man from Stillwater, Minnesota, who lost his battle with osteosarcoma, which is a rare and malignant form of bone cancer. Rock the Cause Records has the honor of working with Laura Sobiak, Zach's mom, one of the things that, that you told me, when you realized that you were going to lose Zach, you had to put your hope into everything that came after. Can you talk to us about that? For me, it, in the cancer world, we hear the word hope. So there's hope for a cure, hope for more time, you know, all those different forms of hope. And so I had to figure out, okay, now what do I, what do I hope for? Yeah. Because that was, all those other things were taken off the table. died on a Monday and it was a Saturday and sort of had his foot in eternity's door. And so when you would watch him, he, he was laying on the couch and he would reach out his hand. He would act like he was throwing a baseball or a football or turning the knobs on his amp. At one point I looked over and he was playing the guitar. But there was one time where he was like he was wanting to grab somebody's hand so I walked over and I grabbed his hand. It was so warm and rough from the medication he was taking and his fingers were calloused from the guitar. And he grabbed my hand really tight and I just held it to my cheek and then he opened his eyes and I said, you don't have to stay here. You can go. died in the morning. I think it was like 6.40. I don't realize the emotion involved in death until you experience it. Letting go is what it is. You're letting go of that connection with that person, at least on this earth. It's tough, you know, we're a very stoic family from an emotion standpoint things happen in this world that aren't always positive. And getting your mind around, is it fair or isn't it fair? And in the end, it took me 49 years to figure out that, you know what, it just happens, guys.
The hardest part, I think, I was talking to my mom about this. The hardest part about him being gone are the moments that you forget that he's gone. Those are the worst. That's something that I, I catch myself doing too. Because you get so focused on, okay, the next thing that I have to do, the next thing I have to do. And then that's when I get caught off guard and it slams me really hard that, oh, he's gone. You know, like I was getting together some stuff from his bedroom. Like, oh, I need to find that t-shirt. So I went down and I was sorting through his stuff. And it just breaks everything in me. Like I just, yeah. It was just such a weird feeling, like that his empty room was like, I felt like more like I was hanging out with Zach in his room when, there, when he wasn't there at all. You know, it's still such a sanctuary for us to go and just be with him. I find more of him there than like at his grave. one night it was Sammy Zach and I and it was actually in January when he found out his cancer had grown and we stayed up really late and all just kind of got really emotional and started crying and Zach went in another room and Sammy and I were talking and we're like we're really going to need each other. Sammy and I have a crazy connection that where we can be together and talk about absolutely anything and I know that she'll always have my back. She's like my sister. She's probably the one who gets it the most out of all of my friends. Cause like, yes, she was Zach's girlfriend, but she was also his best friend. We're his best friends, so we get it. <laughs> Our family dynamic I describe as kind of like, it was like a duality kind of. Um, me and Allie are really close. When Grace was born, um, Zach kind of really formed a deep bond with Grace. They had like some kind of weird, like almost magical way of like <laughs> interacting with each other that I didn't quite understand. We both worry about Grace so much because we got to go to college and kind yeah, of be away from a it. a huge and distraction. And then Grace is like going to this new school where Zach went. And I just remember hearing that like she was bummed about not being able to like tell Zach about her teachers that he had to or how her classes went. Well, he was basically my other half. And it really sucks to have that other half ripped off of you. And that's all. He was just my other half. <laughs> What's weird is nothing prepares you for losing your little brother. Like the hardest part was right before he died. 
And then it just, after he died, it just got so much easier because I felt like I knew him in a way I'd never known him before. <laughs> like, I knew his spirit. He like creeps into my life on a daily basis. <laughs> like, it's just the way he works. One example is I was, I had to move to Virginia. I got married 11 days after he died. So that was crazy and turbulent and I didn't really have time to process it. So I moved to Virginia and I was sad and I would miss my family and I was depressed about the whole thing. So we decided to get a dog, a little wiener dog, cause Zach always wanted a pack of wiener dogs. We got him, brought him home and I looked at the certificate and <laughs> Butters, our dog's birthday is the same birthday as Zach's. And so it was kind of just like a <laughs> really bizarre coincidence. It was me and a couple of Zach's closest friends. We decided to take a road trip and we took a picture out by a lighthouse um, and I posted it on Instagram and it was a cute group picture and then I looked on the comments and someone said, is that a Z in the clouds? And he goes, oh my God. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was just on my phone and we're walking down the streets of Duluth. I'm like, no way. And then I look at the picture like closely and there it was, but we never saw the cloud. We just saw it in the picture. I've only had one dream. We had his funeral three days later, and it was the night of their um, spring concert. So I went to it after the funeral, and the dream that I had a couple days later was uh, <laughs> I was walking to the front of that same auditorium, and I was I turned back from the front to look at the auditorium. I was looking for Zach, and he was behind somebody, and he just tipped his head like this so that I could see, just so that I could see. Death is just another thing on the agenda, kind of. Yeah, it's scary. But the only reason it's scary is because you don't know what's next, or if there is a next. So it's kind of like sitting in the dark. And so you can either choose to be freaking out in the dark and thinking, okay, what's out there? Or you can just relax and fall asleep. And just be happy and content with everything. Well, after he died, there was just a crazy blow up of people that heard his story. <clears throat> then his song spiked to number one on iTunes mm. and... I think it got to number one the day of his funeral, so like it was yeah. a crazy mix of feelings. Nobody knew how they were going to be after he died. I don't think anybody thought that they would be totally, like, completely changed. We just, we just didn't know how it was gonna be. And now, like, a year later, it's like, it's not like I'm surprised about how we're doing, I guess, because I had no expectation. I knew he was going to die, that was certain. And then everything after was just, mystery and now I'm here and I'm okay and I'm sad a lot about it but I'm okay <laughs> one time we just talked about what it would be like when he finally died and he just said like you're gonna be okay and eventually you're gonna move on but you have to promise that you're never gonna settle for anyone and he said to find anyone to find someone better than him which I don't think is possible <laughs> but I told him that I'd promise to do that. I feel so lucky. I wouldn't trade anything, and as hard as it was, I'm so glad that I got to know him and be with him and be a part of this, because it's so much bigger than any of us. He was the best guy I've ever known and probably ever will know.
There were times throughout our experience that I just knew I need to write about this. And so I did keep a journal, especially at the end. I wasn't sure it would be a book. That was intimidating. I didn't think I could write a book. But I also, I knew I would lose those memories if I didn't write them down. I think she knew that what had transpired over the last few years of Zach's life would make a huge difference to a lot of people and touch a lot of lives. And I've never seen anyone quite so driven to do something. Yeah. I was really grateful that I had a project like that to jump into because to me it would have felt almost like a betrayal to go back to life the way it was, you know, and, and just like picking up and going on. I read it from cover to cover in one day. I had never read any of the copy of it before. And I cried. I mean, I cried. It's not a story about a kid who dies. It's a story about a kid who lives and brings hope to the world. Just like with his song and with the video. I mean, it was a big story. Big things happened around it, but there were a lot of little things that happened too. And that's the story that I want to bring to people. It was one of the amazing things about when I first met you and Zach, and I walked up and I said, hey, Zach, you know, I'm with the label. We just got you on iTunes. You're on sale in 146 countries. And his face lit up and he said, well, that's really cool, man. But he still wasn't grasping it. What I saw a month later when we went to the Varsity Theater for the big concert for Zach, which you talk about in the book. It's a great section of the book where Zach wanted to get out and play some live shows. And 1,200 people showed up. But seeing Zach evolve into this musician who knew that his time was short, but he became this, this rock star who knew that he had a platform that he could change the world with through his music. That was a cool evolution to see. I think above all, above all this stuff that's happened, before like, you know, he was a, a hero to a lot of people, he, before any of that, the very first thing he was to me is that he was my brother. And he was a human being. He was the best friend I ever had on a human level. He always makes his way in, makes it a little better. <laughs> I guess he's trying to keep it like it used to be. He didn't have to do some huge extravagant thing to make me happy. He just needed to be there. And I guess I haven't really realized it till now, but he's making his way in. <laughs> just sitting there quiet, waiting for me to notice him. Um, thank you guys for coming out tonight. So not long ago, Zach was a very average kid living a very average, normal teenage life. I remember one afternoon, I found him lying on our living room couch, and um, when I walked in the room, I could tell that there was something wrong. And so I sat down and I asked, you know, Zach, what's wrong? And that's when he started to cry. He wanted to be doing what a normal junior in high school would be doing, but instead he was dealing with this pain and trying to figure out how to do this thing, how to live while dying. It's not about what job you're going to get when you get older. It's not about how much money you're going to make when you get older. When you get to be 75 or 80 years old, if you're fortunate enough to live that long, Zach wasn't, but if you guys are, you're going to look back and say, what good did I do for others? There's this world where people go to work, they make money, they buy a car, they might buy a boat, they have kids. But there's the other 50% that involves, in my mind, spirituality, connecting with people, and making a difference in the world. When it comes down to it, it's the relationships you have with other people. That is the most important thing, how you treat other people and how you love them with everything that happened around Zach, with the videos and the response to the song and all of the outpouring of people around the world, I think I have a better understanding of humanity because what I see is that we all hunger for the same thing. We are all desperate for hope and for love. If I had to do it all over again, I would I, I am a, I'm a blessed woman.
I truly am. I have had that child in my life. He was a great kid. I had a little bit more. 